All right, this graph right here is f. The integral of f is equal to g. So if I want to find g of 0, that basically means that 0 is x. So I'm going to plug 0 right there. And I would have the integral from 0 to 0 of f of t dt. Again, the x value is 0. So I plug it right there. And any time you take an integral with no interval, tongue twister, you get answer of 0. For g of 2, we're simply going to put 2 right there and take the integral from 0 to 2 of f of t dt. So that would basically mean I'm taking the area of f from 0 to 2. So if you look at your graph, this is an area of 1. This is an area of negative 1. So 0 and negative 1 adds up to, sorry, 1 plus a negative 1 adds up to another 0. So we, that g of 0 is also 0. And then the last one, g of 8, well, that's the area from 0 to 8 of the function f of t. So I want the area of the whole thing. So let's see. Let's do this area better. This right here would be a negative 4 for the square. The area of this right here would be a negative 2. And the area of this triangle right here looks like it'd be a positive 2. So the area of the whole thing would be, this was 0. Just cancel out, giving you 0. We've got negative 6 plus 2. Is that negative 4? Looks like it'd be negative 4. So those would be my values of g using this equation right here. In this graph is f. This is what we're dealing with and finding, to find g. The next part is find where g is increasing. The word increasing means derivative positive. So basically that's saying when is g prime of x positive, which means greater than 0. So I want to find out where is g prime greater than 0. You also need to look at this and go, OK, what is g prime? Well, it means to derive g, which means I'm also going to derive this. So when you derive this, meaning d dx of the integral f of t dt, that is called, when you take a derivative of the integral in this form, it's called the second fundamental theorem of calculus. And all you do is you take this x, put it into the function, and you simply have f of x. So the derivative of this is f of x. Isn't this equal to g? So basically they're saying the derivative of g is f of x. So we can go and say that f of x is equal to the derivative of g. This right here is your bread and butter for this problem. I derived this, meaning I just derived that. So f of x is equal to the derivative of g. So when do I want to see where this is positive? Well, wouldn't it be where f of x is positive? So we're looking now at the function. When is the function of f greater than 0? Well, look at the graph. It is greater than 0 for this graph from 0 to 1. So we're from 0 to 1 and from 6 to 8. The graph is above the x-axis. Those are your two intervals right here for where the graph is above the x-axis. So we're looking for, instead of looking for the g prime greater than 0, we're looking for f of x greater than 0. And f of x is this function. So we're looking where the function is above the x-axis. Okay. Um, now, and those would be for the interval 6 to 8 and 0 to 1. If I want to find the extremas, the extremas are where the derivative sorry, of g is where the second derivative of g, sorry, not a second, where's where the first derivative of g is equal to 0 or does not exist. Okay, If I want to find extremas, it's where the first derivative of g equals 0 does not exist. So instead of putting it is g, can I replace g prime with f of x, like we said right here? So we're basically finding where is f of x equal to 0 or does not exist. Instead of g prime, we're doing f of x, because they're, they're synonymous. Because we just said that up here, it's the building block. So this equals this. So where is f of x 0? Well, that would be at 
x equals 1 and x equals 6. Those are the two values where the graph equals 0, where f is 0. Now, to verify their extremas, we have to make sure they change from positive negative or negative to positive. And both of these change signs. They change, this one goes from negative to positive, this goes from positive to negative. So these are your two extremas. This one, by the way, would be a positive to negative, which means it's going up to down. So that one would be a max. And this one, since it's going negative to positive, that means it's going down and back up, this one would be a min. Lastly, but those are your extremas. Let's sketch it. To sketch this, well, we have some points. G of 0, G of 2, G of 8. For sketching G, let's just plot those points. So at 0, we're at 0. At 2, we're at 0. So at 0, we're at 0. At 2, we're at 0. At 8, we're at negative 4. So at 8, we're at negative 4. Now that doesn't help me too much. Let's find some more points. So I just plotted these points. Could I find at 1? What's the area from 0 to 1? It is 1. So at 1, aren't I at 1? At 1 isn't my area 1, so isn't that a 1 right there? Yeah. Let's go to 4. At 4, my area would be 1 plus negative 1 plus negative 4, which would be a negative 4. So at 4, my area is negative 4. At 6, it looks like my area is that's 0, negative 6. So at 6, my area is negative 6. And that looks like enough dots. So my graph would look something like this. You can make it straight or curved. Probably should more be straight, but it looks something like that. You don't know what the edges look like, but it would look something to that extent of what the graph should look like.